Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. We made it yet another week, even though the studio is surrounded by junkies because Mayor de Blasio is a piece of garbage. And I brought, well, ex-Mayor de Blasio. He wanted to ruin the city, which I want to bring this up to. We have a, the, the perfect guest for today because I have two big things to talk about. And Greg it is good for both. It is Mr. Greg Gutfeld, okay, who, you know, from The Great Show on Fox News. Yes. Um, you see him everywhere. On Fox News, everyone in my friend group, um, everyone, all of my friend group's fathers are all big gut sluts. Yes. As we, the first time we went on a show, we coined his um, fan base, the gut sluts. And people will sometimes, I'll be riding the subway and they'll tell me they're a fellow slut. And I know what that means. Mm -hmm. Fan of, fan of Greggy G. You coined that. I did coin that. Yes, you did. I, I, I didn't, but you did. I did. Yes. And I, I'm not the person that ever is like, hey, that's me. Because it's like, you know, sometimes you put it out. You put things out there and I don't need credit. I just want it. I just want people to have fun with it. But there are people, I just want to let you know, Greg, who they will come up to me and say they are a gut slut. So you got a lot of people who are fans of you and supporting you uh, from Staten Island uh, Sanitation Department. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. Dude, you literally have probably, I don't know, between the NYPD, FDNY, DSNY, you will never get a ticket. Your house will always be put out. The fires will always be put out and you will never get a ticket for your trash because the guys love you. Yeah, it's... it's uh if you had to choose, like, I, I thought about this. Like, if I was on the left, I would get, uh, like, pop stars yep. and celebrity friends. and But on the right, I have all the people that could save your ass. And it's like, what's one is for the ego and one is actually for real life. Yes. I think I went the right path. You I, don't, I don't need to hang out with Leo DiCaprio. Right. But, like, if I get trapped in an elevator... You know, the fireman, yeah. which has happened to me, and the fireman can recognize my voice. It helps. <laughs> you're being, you you are, you're, you're crushing it right now. What I'm trying to do is still play that game where I'm being a dirty little weasel and trying to get them both. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to be a dirty little weasel. I think that's a smart, that's yeah. a smart move. If you don't have to commit, why alienate a side, right? Well, yeah. non-committal. Yeah, exactly. No <laughs> well, I thought you were married. <laughs> hey, <we're... laughs> oh boy greggy sorry no i no i do i have i have i have i have a beautiful girlfriend and three kids so we yes. are i mean once you have kids i think having children locks you in more than marriage yes of right. course of right. course that's why i don't have kids right because you, know? you can get out of you can get out of your I can leave any time See ya. Yeah, exactly. I'd probably leave if I had kids too. Prenup? Yeah, uh, no. Whoa, Greg I, is rolling the I dice. Met, I met Elena. <laughs> I was editor of, of Maxim UK. I wasn't like I had money. So right. it was like I wasn't thinking. Well, but, now you do. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, whatever. Hey, listen. The studio is not far from where you live. If the divorce ever does happen, you could sleep right here on the couch while you pick up the pieces because you're not going to have any money. That is true. Uh, Thank you for that. But Elena will be rich. I can move these two chairs together. I'm not. I'm not tall. Yeah, it's you're not. Yeah, you're not tall. But I will tell you this: you're not tall. You are not short to me. You. You're a guy who I wouldn't. If I was a criminal, I wouldn't attempt to mug you. You look like a guy who might know some jujitsu or know how to get me down to the floor, and I wouldn't f with you. If you're if you're if you're a little guy, most of your life you're scrappy. Right. You've you've been in those situations like right. of, of the bullies and and so I I you 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 you're like a scrappy little dog. You can right. you'll bite. I'll right. bite. I'll yes. rip your gonads off with my teeth. Yes, I know. And <laughs> gonads are deep in the body. So Greg yes. Greg will get in there. Gre yeah. Yes. Greg's a muncher. <laughs> yeah. Um and I wouldn't mess with a guy like you because you're confidently wearing glasses like a 1975 lesbian. Yes. And and they look dope on you and I'm like Greg is so I'm so happy to have you on because, you know, I, I, so I have such a good time. I have such a good time when I do your show. And the last time I did your show was I felt comfortable because the first time I did your show, I was like, I, I was coming in. I was nervous. I had a good time. And I felt when I left that show that Tyrus absolutely hated me. Like he wanted to throw me down a flight of stairs. <laughs> but then the last time I was like, okay, Tyrus was laughing and I'm cool with Tyrus. Wasn't there something, it had nothing to do with you. Was it on the first? How many times have you been on? Three times? Three times. So there was one show where there was awkwardness, but it wasn't, it had nothing to do, nothing to do with you. Was it like, it was Tyrus and somebody else? Ty, I think Tyrus was arguing with someone else. I forgot the guy's name next to you, but the one thing about it. Who brought up why he was his, well, he, didn't he ask Tyrus why his leg thing was up? Yes. And yes. It, yeah. He goes, hey, why are you wearing the, uh, why, are you, why do you have your left? pant leg up and it's yeah. like what don't ask that question no and i noticed i noticed <laughs> and it after, changed. i noticed after the show too 
because, you know, he's a wrestler, Tyrus, I believe he just recently retired, but at that point he was still actively wrestling and he had so much back pain mm -hmm. that he was, uh, he was just sitting in the chair in pain. I'm like, ah, that's what it was. It, mm -hmm. it was probably definitely a little bit of me, yeah. but also mostly the guy was just in pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's up, everybody? It's Chris Stefano, a.k.a. Chrissy Pugsley shirt. I am on the road with a brand new hour of stand-up material that we will be filming. Now that this writer strikes over, we will be filming this new hour of material very soon. So if you want to see it live before it goes, hopefully, to some network, come see me at the Brea Improv October 13th to the 15th. The shows are almost sold out. October 18th, La Vista, Nebraska at a place called The Astro. It's a freaking Wednesday in Nebraska. Buy the tickets! October 19th, Kansas City at the Uptown Theater. October 20th, the pageant in St. Louis is sold out. October 21st, Hammond, Indiana, the venue at the Horseshoe Casino. And then October 26th to the 28th, Raleigh Goodnight's Comedy Club, which I've heard is one of the best comedy clubs in America, right there in the state capital of North Carolina. Those are my October dates. Chris dcomedy.com for Tiki Wikis. And then take a look at November. We got Pittsburgh, Detroit, Columbus, Ohio, Dania Beach, Florida, Connecticut, Rhode Island. We're going down the map. Chris, chrisdcomedy.com. Come see me. Brea, California, Nebraska, Kansas City, St. Louis, and Hammond, Indiana, and Raleigh, North Carolina. Those ticket sales are immediate. They're imminent. It's coming up. I'm very proud of my new hour. And if you sit in the front row, what I do is I take out a wiffle ball bat and I start hitting people with it. And whoever comes first gets free tickets to the next show. But I'm happier on because I got two big things. Mm -hmm. One, the first thing will be about the first thing will be about uh, uh, the city and kind of some of the stuff we were talking uh, off air. And then the second thing will be about a personal friend of ours about what the, what he did. This past weekend, and I gotta just get your take on it. But, yes. So well, I want to hear that first. Oh, you want to do that first? Okay, <laughs> yeah. we'll do that first. Let's do that first. Our mutual great friend Joe DeRosa. Of course, I knew it was gonna be Joe him. Joe DeRosa. Greg, sit down. <laughs> stay. Put your seatbelt on. I have video, and I'll show you the video after. Or wait, you know what? Or I'll text you the video, and we could put this up. Hey, let me let me text you the video real quick. Uh, uh, um, I'm texting it. I'm texting it to Vito or Venetti. I'll text you the group. Okay, Ven Venetia, real quick, yeah, yeah. Take a peek. Look at your phone. Um, uh, we're all like sick. That every time anybody pulls out their phone, everybody looks at their phone. We're, yeah. we're, we're all guilty of it. Um, okay, so Joe DeRosa, we had there was a uh, an amazing comedy festival this past weekend in Las Vegas called Skank Fest. Mm -hmm, okay, you know course. about you yes. know okay, put on by Luis Gomez, Big J Okerson, and uh, Dave Smith, the Legion of Skanks, and a, a bunch of other people that helped organize it, and it, it truly was. An amazing experience to go. If you ever get an opportunity to go to Skank Fest in Las Vegas or wherever they do it, go see it. It, it is amazing. Okay. So Legion <laughs> of Skanks is happening. At They did an early show, an afternoon show. Mm -hmm. Live podcast, you know, 500 people there, whatever. They bring on Joe DeRosa, okay, as a guest. Joe DeRosa is, you know, funny, killing yeah. it, whatever. There is a transgender person in the crowd, mm -hmm. okay? But when I say transgender... I mean, transgender, like they they are on their way to getting the surgeries, but it is right now, just to be political, it is a biological male wearing a dress. Right. That's that's what this is. It yes. would be as if I had a full dress on and I'm saying I'm about to train. I don't have a I don't have a, an ounce of es uh, estrogen mm -hmm. in me. I have not gotten any surgery. I am a I'm a biological man that I have a dress on. Yes. Okay. And I have lipstick on and I have my hair long and maybe I have a padded bra. Yeah. But I am a man. Mm -hmm. I don't even look, I don't, I don't. I look like I'm a, I'm a male. And we well, yeah. So don't play it until, until wait, let me tell them the story. So, because this is at the end. So, okay. They, somebody mm -hmm. on Legion of Skanks, I don't know which one, says, Joe, do you think you can get this person hard? And Joe says, I could do it in five minutes. Okay. So Joe DeRosa goes to the bathroom with this person and proceeds to start jerking them off. Really? Yes. Yeah, yes. Please start jerking them off. And then that person turns around and starts blowing Joe DeRosa. No. Yes. No. Starts <laughs> blowing Joe DeRosa. Vito just fell out of his chair. Starts <laughs> blowing Joe DeRosa to the point where Joe DeRosa comes in this person's mouth. Okay. Then, then, Joe DeRosa. <laughs> I don't know how to rest. I, I thought this was going to be something involving a heckler. No. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. Yes. You know, you. you <laughs> <laughs> this is the exact reverse of a heckler. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Joe DeRosa then says, then says, you know, he's sitting after the podcast, you know, at the after party. 
You know, everybody know everybody knows mm. about this. And and, he, and I go up to him. I said, Joe, like, how do you feel? He goes, Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not gay. I said, Joe, <laughs> Joe. I said, Everybody supports you. Truly, no, but nobody would care at all. Mm. You're gay, buddy. He says, How am I gay? I said, Where do I begin? I said, You took a man mm -hmm. and you jerked him off. He goes, It's a woman. I said, Joe, that's a, a biological male. I would be. In a dress. Right. And then he goes, no, she's not. She identifies as trans. I said, well, then I identify as yeah. trans right now. now if if me you off. blew me, yes. am I, uh, uh, did you blow me? <laughs> did you blow a guy? Or did you? And he said, I, I, I blew a pig. You're a pig. And he kept calling me a pig. And I said, Joe, 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 did another man's, did you ejaculate into mm -hmm. another man's mouth this morning? He said, yes, I did. I said, you're gay. Mm -hmm. That's what gay men do. And again, nobody cares. Everybody loves it. He said, yep. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. That was Friday. Cut to Sunday night when the Skankfest ended. This video was just sent to me. This is how Joe ended his fat, ended Skankfest with the man who blew him in the bathroom. And will still try to tell me. I want, to, I want Greg then to get Greg's opinion on if he's gay or not after this. Play this. He's never been happier. I know. So there is the man in a skirt and mm -hmm. a, a biological male in a skirt with a leather jacket. Again, we support that person. Go do you, boo. Love it. Nope. We're not. I'm not even comment. I don't care. Be trans. Hook up with people. Whatever you want. But Joe is, is, is trying to tell us That's, now that yes. he's waking up today still a straight white male. And we're saying you're still a white male. Absolutely. Even though you're adopted and you're actually Egyptian, but we will give you we will give you the benefit of the doubt and we will let you in with the straight whites, we, with the white males. But you are not straight anymore. You are not straight anymore. What do you think, Greg? Well, I, he touched. I mean, he was comfortable touching another guy's junk. Yes. And I think like I, it, the definition of straight is is you can't do that. It just like it's just it's your junk or no junk. Mm -hmm. You know. And I and I, he, the fact that he actually didn't hesitate you know he wasn't in, it wasn't like he was in prison and this was the only option no there were probably other women out there yeah he chose to do this and then joe also has said hey don't um don't tell anybody i said joe <laughs> yeah. you did it in front of the legion of skanks podcast there were thousands of people that saw it <laughs> and then you talked about it on every podcast and sang karaoke yes everybody knows i said if anything let your friends tell the story in a fun way this is and then he was like all right fine you're right that's amazing i mean what a it is amazing do you think he did it for the story or he did it because he wanted to let me tell you joe DeRosa's life mm -hmm. okay in two hours joe DeRosa. 12 o'clock, does Legion of Skanks, does Skank Fest, does that, gets a blowjob from a guy, jerks him off. And then within 40, uh, about an hour and a half later, he was over Zoom closing on his first house at the Circus Circus Hotel yeah. bar and lobby, over Zoom with his lawyer. So I said, Joe, that's the definition of a full day. You've yes. had a nice full day before <laughs> lunch. He, wow. I, you probably <laughs> doesn't even see any difference between those activities. No. You know? No, I, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, these lawyers on the real estate lawyers are probably on the Zoom. Being like, oh, you're in Vegas. Yeah, I'm just in Vegas, yes. you know, for work. Yeah. I'm in Vegas for work. Yeah. What? Oh, what's your job? Ah, he's got a blowjob from a transgender guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thousands of people are going to see it and talk about it. But that's <laughs> the, th the thing is, I, don't, I do believe, I do believe that Joe liked it. He told me that was the best blowjob he's ever gotten in his life. And I do think, good for Joe. Yeah. If no, you're I, happy, I'm happy. No, I, I and, and the thing is, Joe is always so... He's so sorrowful, you know. He's so maudlin. Whatever gets gets puts a smile on his face. I can't interfere. I'm thinking though. When I think about like doing that real estate call, they're probably oh, you're in Vegas. Hey, what stays in like they'll they'll, they'll do the, yeah. the the cliche. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And he probably said, yeah, I just got a head from a transgender. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not supposed to tell us that. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. It's one of those things where it's it what it's you know Skankfest. You know, some of the best community, the Tim Dillons of the world, the Shane Gillis's of the world, these, these great comics, big level comics, everybody. Nobody was the talk of that fest mm -hmm. more than our good yes. friend Joey D. Maybe it, was a, maybe it was a career move. Seriously. Yeah. Well, they said that, you know, they asked me, I did, um, I did the podcast the next day and they asked me, they said, what happens if Joe DeRosa actually, truly 
comes out as fully gay, I said, well, then I'll enjoy watching his Netflix special because he'll get one. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. He will get one. Will he say this was directionally true? That it really didn't, emo- it was an emotional truth? <laughs> right, yeah, 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 right. Yes. Like Hassan. Yes. I'm not really gay. I, it was just an emotional yeah. truth that uh, I told the story. Yeah. But um, then, but then if he, if there's, if now this is incentivized, what are you going to do now? How are you going to like, if this works for him? See, I thought now, because Joe has made me step up my game. I thought now that the way I would get into, you know, the corp, uh, like the way I would get into being with the left side and kind of playing both those angles. Well, I got a Puerto Rican family, diverse, even though, you know, Jasmine, I've said she's Puerto Rican. She's really just Italian with a (laughs) little mustache. And I'm like, we'll make her Puerto Rican. We'll make my kids Puerto Rican. Their real names are like, you know, Trevor and Michael. But I'm like, this is Jose and Julissa. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, woo. but now it seems like diverse. It seems like even being Puerto Rican, even being Puerto Rican or even being black or just Chinese, it's it's not enough. Yeah. You're not then diverse enough. You now have to do something extra. So I'm, I'm thinking then what I'll probably do is I have the Puerto Rican family and I'm a Puerto Rican stay at uh, a family guy. I'm a white person, a proud white father of a beautiful, diverse Latina family who I love and cherish you know, my Latinx family. But then I also, I moonlight and I do suck cock in the West Village. Well, you know, that's, I, I, I didn't see you going in that direction, but I respect it. I was thinking, you know, perhaps you could like sacrifice one of your children as a trans. Like, I'd say like, I have a trans daughter. Yes. A trans daughter. And that, um, Oh, my stepson. That's perfect for my step, stepson. Your, your stepson, yeah, yeah. Listen, he, I love my stepson. He wants to be a part of his family. He's gonna have to cut his dick off. That's exactly, the way it works. Exactly. You know. And then, and then, um, and then also, you should work into the fact that you you met your girlfriend on 9/11 while you were helping people yes. uh, out. Because I think that that's something that you, just so you can get the other side in. Yes. So yes. You, you got 9/11. You got trans. Yeah. You got diversity. You're you're in. I'm. In, 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 yes. I, and, uh, I smell Netflix yes, special. Yes, I love it. These are my, I've named one of my children Stop the Asian Hate is their full name. <laughs> Stop the Asian Hate to Stefano. Yes. Kiwiko, Kiwiko, Kiwiko. Folks, I talk about it, I think, every single podcast, whether they're sponsoring me or not, because I cannot tell you as a parent how much it upsets me when my own kids are stuck to the device, when I see other parents with their kids glued to us, some type of device. We want them out there in the world off the devices. I think that's every parent's dream, even if we're putting them with, you know, the right, the right uh, uh, stuff on the device, with educational tools and learning tools, fine. But they get sucked into it and we want them off. And KiwiCo is the service that I use that helps get my kids off the devices and into the world. It is unbelievable they believe kiwico believes every kid is naturally creative and curious and that hands-on experiences build and create confidence and problem-solving skills and make these kids into little future people who are going to change the world and it's right they're right i've done these projects with my children it's amazing because even me i don't really know how to build or do anything it gives me confidence so i'm like oh look at that i built a volcano Kiwi projects are designed by a team of educators, makers, engineers, and rocket scientists who brain who brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting, age-appropriate, and educational product products. They are real engineering and science projects with high-quality materials. We really have so much fun. My kids get so excited when they get delivered to the door. As a matter of fact, we just moved. My daughter, she goes, did you change the subscription? Did you change our address in KiwiCo? That was one of the first questions. I said, babe, of course, I, uh, yes, hello. And then I realized I didn't, and I called them, and now it's fine. So you can redefine learning with play and explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence with KiwiCo. Get 50% off, 50% off. I'm t- it's like insane. 50% off plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash chaos. So I'm already told you that this product is so amazing for kids, especially if you have kids, it is so amazing for them. And now 50% off, you literally have nothing to lose. Even on the off chance you didn't like it, you just got a 50% off, so you're winning either way. And I guarantee you will love it. That's 50% off your first month at kiwico.com slash chaos. I've, this has got the Chrissy Chaos guarantee. I guarantee you, you're going to love this one. I use it with my kids. I'm going to start using it here in the podcast. And me, Vito, and Venetier are going to start doing arts and crafts. Maybe that's a Patreon idea. You know, the whole thing with DeRosa, when we were having a conversation with it with Legion of Skanks, it wasn't about if it wasn't about um, uh, like whatever Joe wants to do. Who cares? It was about like we were all talking like the, the, the idea of 
even being straight, a straight male, mm -hmm. is so open-ended now. Like a kid today, a 25-year-old kid today, being straight, if I told them that, like you and I were older, so we're like, well, that falls into the gay category. But a 25-year-old kid who not necessarily even is like a woke warrior, just a normal 25-year-old kid would be like, oh, but that's not gay. They, they wouldn't, they, they don't even have a definition of straight and gay anymore. I heard, you know, you always heard about this when, oh, like uh, circle jerks and shit like that. Sure. I never encountered that in my life. I just thought, and I went to an all guy school. Me too. I never saw this stuff. So I don't, I still think that you, when, if you are comfortable touching other guys junk and you're not a doctor, that makes you gay. Right. I just, I mean, I'm, and, 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 and Again, there's no uh, criticism attached to that. It's just that, you know, you're like, and, and I, I'm not, you know, I, I, maybe you're bisexual. I don't know. But I, I, it's like, that takes, that takes a lot from a male to be able to do that. Right. So, and, and by the way, I want to be clear. And I think Greg, you'll agree with me. We're only talking about if you're touching a penis, you can get teabagged all day. I That's can drop true. my nuts on your shoulder and that we're just guys hanging out yeah. playing golf. Literally hanging out. <laughs> no, it, it's true. <laughs> It's true. I mean, and, and, and you know why? Because balls are comical. Yeah. Oh, I have a question for you. Yes. Here's okay. So we grew up watching uh, my balls name. My testicles names are Greg Gutfeld. Oh my god! I'm, <laughs> I'm literally touched by that. You know the um the uh, the uh did you? I had this question and I, I didn't use it on my show. But remember when we were growing up, any slapstick that involved getting hit in the balls was mm -hmm. considered a punchline. Yeah. So like a, a, a baseball would go in the groin or somebody would paddle. Would, is that the same for a trans female? Interesting. Yeah, it's like if a trans female gets whacked in the groin, is that still a punchline? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. No, I think now I think now you're bad you're you're attacking trans people. Yes, exactly. So then that should apply to the men. We should no longer be laughing at shots of the groin. They have to take all of those scenes out yeah. of movies. Right. Take yes. them all out. <laughs> take, them take them all out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is a good point because because yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you think, Vito or Venetia? Any opinion on that? Because that's it. I want to bring it to the younger crowd. These these are our thirty year old millennials. Ah, uh, yeah. We have our thirty year old no Gen Zers. These are our Gen Zers, yes. right? What do you think? Um, I think that that's fair. We should just start editing out all yeah. the shit yes. and just you know let's be correct. When we'll I just came, erase the past. When Venetia started working for me, she was like AOC's like right hand person, now and now true. we have con now she's a gut slut. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, you probably we, just didn't know that existed. Yeah, you didn't know there was another side. Yeah, Venetia will get texts sometimes like, "Hey, I listened to your um, <laughs> friend that you work for, uh, Chris Stefano's podcast. That's problematic. <laughs> that is problematic." If you use the word problematic, I don't want to be friends with you. Yeah, that's that was the <laughs> that was the first word that kind of came out of that the wokeism thing, yes. you know. And it was like you couldn't. It's, it's something is wrong, but I, we can't define it. Yes, so it's problematic, and it's like, and people could lose their jobs just by the word problematic. And you have to like be like a shark and go, I need to know the specifics. And then you find out that nobody's offended. Yeah. Nobody's offended. It's just problematic. Problematic. How yeah. about this? Somebody told me. Uh, well, family member of mine worked at a hospital for a very long time, recently retired. But another one of her colleagues who worked with her for twenty five years, girl came in. I, I, I'm sure that I believe the girl was black. Came in, new girl that they're training, and she says to her, just a figure speech. She goes, "Oh, you know, she had a the, the young girl had a question about something, and she goes, listen, don't worry about it. I'm gonna be here with you every day, teaching you how to stuff. We're gonna whip you into shape.'" <laughs> And she then told her superior, uh, you sure whip me into shape. That's not right. Blah, blah. Yeah. This woman gets fired. The 30-year-old woman gets fired. Ready for this? Then the young girl with no superior to help her goes into work alone. Day one, goes to work alone, accidentally mixes someone's, they were uh, uh, lab techs. That's where they yeah. worked in the phlebotomy lab. Mixes up someone's blood sample. Tells someone... Uh, they have a positive HIV result when, of course, they had nothing wrong with them. It was a mistake from somebody else. That person commits suicide that night. No, my yep. God. Oh my yep. God. Supposedly that person then came back in that night, commit suicide, with, you know? And I was like, okay, like, there's the pro that, yes. that's problematic. E e you know? e equity over competence. Yes. It would have been something different, though, if she kept, if, if the person that was fired kept doing it, like, you know, I'm a real slave to my work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Just keep doing it until, like, the person's like, then you're the person going, is this really happening? <laughs> but the very first, on one? Yeah. On one? And then, of course, that, everybody's scared of, of criticizing, so you end up with, like, a below-competent person. Right. Who then 
ends up fucking over somebody's life. Right. No, I, I agree. I think, too, you know, uh, like this world we live in, and this is the other thing I want to talk to you about is we were talking about our city, New York City, but I think this is a, a, a problem across most major U.S. cities now, um, or at least the, the mostly like Democratic ones. And this is really not even, I'm not, you know, I'm in the middle. I'm Chrissy down yeah. the middle is Chrissy Gray zones, but I'm just saying like it's a fact. Like when you go to a, a more, let's call it Republican city like a Dallas, you just see less crime in the streets and less problems in the streets than you do in the New Yorks, Portlands, Seattles, mm -hmm. LA's of the world. And so my question, though, is do you think that with this almost borderline anarchy that's happening in some of these cities, is it a move by certain members of the government to make us start begging for AI, start begging to be ruled by some body that is indifferent, that is a robot, that is not human, where now they will have the AI police dogs coming in, they will have the AI judges, and it is all a fair world. It's funny because I hadn't thought of that until you said it because on the five last week i actually advocated for ai to fight crime and it was because i couldn't think of another solution and my solution was like an app okay if they're not, if they're if all criminals are allowed on the street the citizen has a right to know where they are so it'd be like a weather app or a Waze app mm -hmm. that tells you that when somebody's coming into the store, it goes beep, 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 and you know, or you're walking down a street and there's a beep, and so it's like a, it's like AI, all, all AI. So when somebody gets arrested and obviously released because we have no cash bail, they get put into a system so that you know, and the system is AI. So that system is just clawing and scouring all these names, and so it's like it knows when, the, and you could get the app, and you know that. What you so I basically just bought into this. Yeah. You, yes. I right. Did. So I didn't, and I didn't even hear that that yeah. segment that yeah. you did. Yeah. And 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 I and you know obviously you're you know very smart. You're very in the now. I'm like if it, even at somebody at your level, it's the only way is it's, like, yeah. It's like, is it we, working look, then? It has no choice. Yeah. Because we're we're left without a choice. It, it, it's it's incredible. It's it's like I the analogy is you know when there's a uh, you have a husband and a wife and a family, you need two people. In, in cities, you need a Republican or a Democrat. The Democrat feels, the Republican thinks. Right. Or the, the, Demo the Democrat looks out for the people below, and the Republicans make sure that the people paying the taxes are happy. All those cities you mentioned have no Republicans anymore, so it's like a single-parent household. Right. And so it's all going to shit. And you can't just tell a single parent household, like, you know, you should really get married. You know, it would be great. You, you're screwing up the kids. You can't. And that's almost how the cities are. You try to tell them you probably could use a Republican. Right. You could have you, you, you maybe get a Republican in here. They will not do it. So I think we're completely screwed. Yeah. And I think that at, we might again, I know it's a bit Orwellian, but it's like we already probably are there where it's going to get to the point because somebody like my father who was around, you know, who was like and. He's in his mid 70s, like, look, New York in the 70s and the 80s was an active war zone. He said, yeah. but, but the difference was, is you knew that there was a way out of it. You knew that the police were doing their job. It was just things were out of control. And you knew you could almost feel like eventually this is going to end. He goes, yeah. with nowadays, I don't know because the policy has been changed and the police don't want to do their jobs, rightfully so, at times where it's like at times when they put too much force. You know, you're obviously that's not good. And then the other flip side is, well, I'm not going to do anything because I don't want to lose my career. So they they don't know what to do. And then you have, um, you know, all these problems. And my even somebody again, like my dad is like, I don't see a way out. He goes, I just feel bad. He's like, my only way out is death. I'm 77 years old and I eat cheeseburgers three meals a day. <laughs> yes. You know, it, it, the only way out is to let the cities go in corporate pl places like I work, Fox, they should move, but they won't because this is where the money is. But there's one, there's one bizarre and grim positive between like, let's say now and say the nineties and the eighties. Crack made you violent, but the drugs now just paralyze you. Like when you walk, when you're going up and down, you see them, they're hunched over, uh, they're either vomiting, but they like, they're, they're not trying to rob you because they're incapacitated. Right. That's the only upside is that the drugs are now so lethal that these guys aren't mugging you. Now you have other problems with the gangs and the smash and grab stuff, but in terms of the drug addicted, they're not, I don't even think they're robbing people for their drugs anymore because they can't move. Right. You know, they're like, I have three on my block. And they're like, they're almost, they're like stationary. When I walk home, they are completely frozen. Right. And, and it's like, it, they look like they're dead. 
but they're not. Right. They just come back. The moment, of, 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 like, I will call the cops or I call I, I call 311 and then 311 will go, will send you over to 911 and then you, I'm like, ah, shit. And it's like, I just hate all, like, I hate doing this, but we, we, everybody on my block has decided that we have to, we have to keep a file of this. So maybe it'll happen. And then, but nothing ever happens because right. then they, then they get revived and then they're like arguing and then they move on their way and then they come back an hour later. Right. Yeah. That's the thing is, is nobody, I get it. Like I have many friends who are police officers. They're like, unless you're raping or murdering someone, what is the point What's mm -hmm. the point of me arresting you? For what? Yeah, yeah. So you could just be right back out, but meanwhile, maybe you you know, you know, smeared your shit on me yeah. or I broke my ankle trying to wrestle you to the ground. Or I got to do paperwork. Yeah. I was listening to the guys leaving one time. They go, oh, got to go do paperwork. And that's their way. That's also their way of leaving early. I've been watching this. They'll go like, yeah, I got to go. Got to go do paperwork. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, that's the exit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the exit yeah. plan. I know. It, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm like, I also don't see a way out of it but then i don't know but then when i speak to my dad he's like but then also he was like you know i never thought new york was going to be as good as it was you know in like the early 2000s and how it was the safest city in america and how we were just thriving he's like i just genuinely didn't know i have this weird observation so i, I go up every morning on sixth avenue from you know downtown all the way to uh 47th one you walk no no in a car oh, okay oh, are you kidding? i was gonna say jesus Christ. i used to yeah. but that was stupid. he walks in high heels yes exactly i made extra money in the mornings yes the um the, they call i used to give a lot of DeRosas. the uh <laughs> the um <laughs> I, when you what you know what i noticed which is really weird and i don't know if i'm right or wrong but if you look at if you, if you subtract all the tourists from what you're watching there's a lot of women going to Pilates or Equinox. They're in their Lululemon. You see them all. Let's say like 11.30 or noon. They're all going to their lunch. Meanwhile, the dudes in roughly that age are fucked up. Right. It's weird. It's like you don't see women like completely destroyed. So it's, uh, you have this, this weird dichotomy of super fit women. And they, they seemingly are... They're not concerned about what's going on in the bus stop where the guy's totally laid out. And he's got right. all his shit or a half naked dude or a dude right. just pissing. They're just going right to Equinox right. or they're going to the Pilates studio. Meanwhile, there's and, and it's like it's like two universes that we've now gotten used to the fit, right. the fully fit walking by the complete dregs of society. And there's like, it's weird. Sometimes you'll just, that's all you'll see right around lunchtime between like usually the Chelsea area when I'm going up, yeah. there's the fitness and the, and just the, the the dying, the dying. It's really weird. It's almost all young women, and uh, they're all like. It, it's, I just find it weird because I go. I wondered in the seventies in crime if women went out because the guys were like more violent, right? And and in this case, they know that these guys can't keep up with them. Like they'll just push them down if well, they come out. Well, them. it's a very interesting point that you make about the different quality of drugs. That is, these are more paralyzing. Where crack was, you know, more aggressive because. My friends who are cops say, listen, but as far as like real crimes, like, you know, like the ones to care about rapes and murders, they're not really hot. They're yeah. not any higher They're You're still relatively safe because and and they and they said they're like, we, we don't know why. It's just that that's not happening. But yeah. it's happening because of what you mentioned. Yeah, it's it's the so what you what you see is you just see the ugliness and the sadness of these people. Right. Yeah. And you can I, I, I you can I've talked to them uh, because I have to. Because they're like they're asleep on front of in, in front of my place, and uh, but they would some of them will get aggressive, but they're n they just don't have it. Right now, if you try, if you were to get physical with them, they would get that homeless strength. Right, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> that's what I, I try to get that in the gym every week. I'm like, I'm trying to summon that homeless strength. <laughs> it's when it, when it takes four cops. <laughs> and it's just the cops are getting, the cops just don't want to get dirty, and then there's three female cops are all yeah. on the side going like, yeah. going like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, he's moving. But it's, uh, but you know, it, it is it, that there there isn't a violent component to it, except when they. Except the mentally ill, when they push people in front of trains right. or hit people with bricks, right. that's why you have to keep your. You always have to be kind of like situationally aware, even though like every like you're walking around with your pods in and and you don't see that somebody could push you right in front of a truck yeah. if they want to, yeah, you know, and maybe they just want to go away to go away and get uh, 
for life. Right. So that's what they do. I always, even before all this stuff, I always would, you know, I'm a bigger guy. I would always, my back is always on the subway platform. I never thought to like look over the yellow line. Like I was like, who cares? You're going to feel the train. You're going to smell it. Yeah. Do you, it, it's that, if you've been following that whole thing on, I don't know, was it TikTok where like the, all men think about is decline of the Roman Empire and women don't. Have you been following this trend? No. Yeah. So it's like they keep at, like, it's like they'll go up to a random dude. Have you thought about the decline of the Roman Empire? And he goes, yeah, three times today. And then, but women don't. And it, I feel like it's like, as a guy, no matter what you are, you're always thinking of the possibility of violence. Right. You're just kind of yeah. like, you know, it's like you're walking around. It's like, what would happen if this happens? What if that guy could, uh, it's like, what would I do in this subway instance? And then, but, but meanwhile, the girl you're with is, is, is like, you know, playing something or. And or, she's the one that should be thinking about violence. The, it's, she yeah. should be thinking about it. Yeah. I tell that to my wife when she's here. She's right. in Spain right now. I go like, I go, please don't. I tell her. That's what he calls a divorce. My wife's in Spain. <laughs> My wife's in Spain. <laughs> Spain is the new Canada. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Trudeau is divorced. I know. What about that now? Yeah. What if he, what, what, Trudeau is one of those guys, because I feel like even that, now, that's how prevalent divorce is. You would never see no. in the last 30 years a world leader. He must have done something really, oh like he, he has a really bad reputation for all sorts of shit. But, uh, you know, he, he still, can't, I mean, he just gave a standing O to a Nazi. So yeah, yeah. can't beat that. It's one of those things where it's like, not only did you cheat, you cheated in blackface. You yes. can't do that. Yeah. Uh, By the way, have you ever seen the picture of him in blackface? I don't think I have. Okay. So yeah. take, next time you get the picture. Look at Vanity the has it as a screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> Look to his left. Okay, here we go. Look to, uh, okay, so you see that? Now, there's a guy sticking his tongue out that you never really see. Where? Uh, uh, let me see. Can I get up? Yeah. Get up, yeah. Okay, get up. The picture that I use. He's really that height. We're not adjusting the cameras. See right there. Okay. This okay. One, you're, there's something going on over here. There's here we go. There is something going on in this. This is the Pull picture we use. Make it big. It's this one here. Okay. Uh, if you make it, if you make it bigger, there it is. Look at that. Look at that over there. People don't notice that. What is that? That's a tongue. Is he about to lick his face? Yes. And that's it. Like, I've been using this picture for years, and I never noticed that until about a month ago. Can you V? Can we zoom in and see if that is in fact Joe DeRose's tongue? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trying to lick another man. <laughs> uh, all right. Does well, that count if you if it's with a man in blackface? Is that it counts for diversity? Yes, exactly. Yes, it does. Um, wow. Yeah, but so, because now, I mean, you got the, I think it was the the female, was it the prime minister of Sweden or Norway who got caught like openly cheating on her husband? The real cute one. Yes. She's, is she, um, what's, what country is that? I thought it was it's a small country. A small, it, was, it wasn't Greenland. Was it Greenland? I don't know. Where did they film Lord of the Rings? New Zealand. It was New Zealand. That's what it is, New Zealand. Um, yes, because I feel like these leaders now, like, People are just getting divorced. Like that's how you know it's it's like relationships are like a thing that's like dying when it's like you would never have like figureheads like kings and queens. Like they would do anything to protect it, right? Like even Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. It's like you know it's over, but they didn't get divorced. Now it's like they're like fuck it, we're getting has divorced. Has Melania been on the circuit? Put a, what'd you say? Has Melania been on the circuit? What do you mean on the circuit? This in this campaign. In this campaign. With Donald Trump? Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've seen I, I, her. I, she's been she's been hidden. I don't think she's thrilled about this. Right. You know. But you know. But I, well, the whole thing with Trump. They for just me, did a prenup, a, a new prenup. Melania and Donnie? Yeah, just like last week or two Smart. weeks ago. See, the thing is with with um with Donald Trump, I mean, you know, I have, you know, reading material for the children. Yes. Part of the tweet. And uh, <laughs> and for the kids is I actually do I actually do talk to my kids, the older one, my eight year old and my thirteen year old, a lot about Trump and 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 not necessarily for or against, but about all these negative things that they hear about everyone. I I remind them that the media is, it's depending who you're hearing it from, you're only always, with algorithms, it's things that we didn't grow up with, you're always most likely hearing one side of the yeah. story, always. Yeah. Do you know? Do you ever listen to Scott Adams at all? He's the no. guy who did Dilbert. He has this great rule that nothing you ever read about celebrities or people in the media is true. Right. And, it, and it's true. That it's, it's like nothing. It's like, it's mainly because they've, they create the narrative for one specific thing. And, uh, and it's, you will find it, you will find when people write about you, you'll go like that. You know, it's it's it, you won't care until it happens to you, and right. then it feels really gross. Right. I, I I agree because, and again, I don't have an issue at all with the media because I don't know all of it, but I certainly know that like when I'm watching 
you on Fox News or I'm watching, you know, Anderson Cooper at CNN, you're both doing an entertainment show. Yeah. That is the news, but it's entertainment. It's not the local news for the most part is the one that, I mean, New York is big, but like your local news in Chattanooga, Tennessee, they're pretty much just reporting the news. Yeah. There has to be some level of entertainment, but they're most, where you, I get it, you have an, op, you have an obligation every day to talk about something, so you're going to have to get sensational with things. Yeah, and the thing is that the uh, when you talk about the, like how did crime get out of control, it, what the decline of journalism locally has been a problem because they used to cover the crime. There was like a, the crime was the local problem. You knew exactly like every every local station and your paper covered it. But now all these papers are gone. They're like they're like basically skeletons. There's right. no real local journalism. It was like the Jesse Smollett thing was a rarity. But those were two local Chicago journalists that broke that story. That right. wasn't national, right? You know, and so that like national reporters don't follow. The crime in L.A., they don't follow the crime. In, like that, that horrible murder in uh, Beverly Hills. It was like a 80-year-old uh, music legend producer or oh, something. Yes. Yeah. And that, that, that should have been massive, but it's like the national news. It's not a headline. Right. But local news isn't a headline either because yeah. it's not there. Well, I know. Well, we, I, was just, I was just saying this earlier, like, you know, yesterday with the, you know, Jets, you know, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift being there, you know, which, again, I get it. Taylor Swift is a sensation. I get it. She needs to be in the news. I, I understand. But, you know, I was watching uh, the, the national news and they were like, they were like, oh, they were like, we're going to, you know, get to there is um, a nine year old girl who's been abducted from a campsite uh, right from, you know, her family is horrifically, uh, you know, uh, horribly upset. And we're going to get to that story. But first, first, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. And I was like, that's like almost like a Black Mirror episode where yeah. I understand. But it's like a little bit like. How, as a newscaster, like they went right from that story into a big smile right. with Taylor Swift. And I'm like, how desensitized is everybody? Yeah, the transitions are just so painful. Right. You know? <laughs> but you're in the media. So, and you're obviously, I know you as a person, as like a good guy. So, anything I've ever read about you that like Gutfeld's horrible, I'm like, they, that's just, they don't know him. You mm -hmm. know, like I've, I've made the decision as just a human being to, if I have to actually know you, I have to actually know you personally to have an opinion about you even somebody like a a donald trump or a hillary clinton opposites i don't know either one of them personally yeah. all i know is what the media has fed them what they've edited and showed me so if i can't make an assumption about that i don't know these people if i knew them i'd have a better opinion but you i know as a good guy until you sent us a canceling of the podcast email that we had CIA officer Jason Hansen on the show Ow. look through this email and see is it true or is it not? Let's see the email. Oh, but, great. Uh, here we oh, go. Uh, Venetia is, Venetia is gonna get sorry, Venetia is she's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. Raycon, baby. Happy anniversary to Raycon. They're turning six years old. Oh, you're so cute. Raycon, baby. I've been using Raycon. They are the only headphones I no, okay? Raycon, if you're using other headphones, good for you, but you really should be using Raycons because their everyday earbuds are known for delivering high quality audio and thoughtful features. They're so thoughtful. Like a 32 hour battery life, 32 hour battery life and a perfect in-ear fit for all day wear and lasting comfort. All this at half the price of other premium brands. No wonder they're already racked up 78,000 five-star reviews. They're catching up to the five-star reviews on the Crazy Chaos podcast. And this year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So needless to say, there's a lot to celebrate. To thank everyone who's shown them support in the past six years, Raycon is offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 40%. So right now, for celebrating Raycon turning six with the biggest sale of the year, go on and go to buyraycon.com slash chaos and use the code birthday. That's B-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y. Birthday. I know a lot of you guys say birthday, but it's birthday. B-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's code birthday at buyraycon.com slash chaos to get 20 to 40% off buyraycon.com slash chaos. Why did I cancel? So what did I say? I can't I, remember. Uh, I forgot. I, I forgot. Oh, that, that was true, but I was also probably hungover.
Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. was, I mean, and, and the thing is, it's a, it, I'm glad you brought that up because I stopped drinking because of that, because of that. I, uh, I was like, I was, uh, realizing that I was fucking up every morning right? and I was like, why am I doing this? And it's like, I go, okay, I'm just going to stop. So it's been, you know, a month and like, right. I actually do shit now and I don't say no, but almost if I'm canceling something, no. it's a, it's a hangover. No, we were, far, we, 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 I, I knew to be honest with you that day. Blue. We just, Greg just wrote the word blue to me. I thought, you mean to send that to DeRosa? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, we pulled it up, and we it was funny because we had, we're going to have you and then the CIA guy on, and we were like, oh, what's funny? He goes, my back, Greg writes, my back is that completely is true. Up. I've been in bed since Saturday. That's true. Okay. Hoping after therapy yesterday, it would improve, but it got worse. Therapy meaning is alcoholism. Yes. I apologize <laughs> and make it up to you, but after I type this, it's back to fetal position I form. Did, I did actually go and get a massage, uh, which counts as therapy, but it, it didn't no. work. But that I could, I still could have dragged. I didn't realize how close you were. I, I could have dragged myself here, no. but I didn't. No, you know what? It's better. It, be it was better anyway. So cause to get the bit for uh, from the CIA guy. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, dude. So like, so like you being like a member of the media again, someone who I actually like. I don't care where my people who I know and personally like stand politically. It doesn't matter to me. I'm like, they're. I know that they're good people. How do you feel about like where the state of the media is and what it's become to get ratings? I, I mean, I hate it, uh, but I, and I hate the media, right? But and, but that's why I'm in it because I like to I like to be inside it and and kind of mess with it. I have more control, and I do. I, and the thing is, people know where I'm coming from, right? And almost like I would say half of what I do on my show is directed at the media, yeah. Right, and I and I and obviously I come with a bias. I'm I'm to the right. You know, but I feel like it's okay because I'm balancing out everything else, you know, and uh, I was at a fucking party on Friday night and some dude just like lit into me about, and I, I, I'm just like, going, this is why, okay, this is why I'm at Fox because right. this guy doesn't know anything that he's talking about. He, and, and he doesn't I, know you. He doesn't know me. And he kept saying to me, Hey dude, relax, man. It's all off the record. And I'm like, what are you talking about off the record? I right. like you think that I'm like a different person. Right, I'm a different person now than I am there. I'm exactly the same. And uh, and uh, so I, I I actually said, excuse me, I got to smoke, and I walked away and left him there. And um, anyway, he, he blew me in the bathroom. That's what I was going to so say. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> well, well, I was going to say because you know Vito, even though he looks like Wreck-It Ralph, is a big snowflake liberal DeRosa, mm. and that's the code word for. <laughs> and so and so Vito, what? Let me ask you, Vito, how? How do you feel, Greg Gutfeld, member of Fox News, on the right? You being more liberal, what are your thoughts on Greg and Fox News? We can we can just leave it open here. What are your thoughts, Vito? All right, I mean, as far as Fox News go, like, do I do not like Fox News? I don't like it's not directed towards me, and I totally get that. It's just mm -hmm. not something I'm trying to watch. But I don't watch. I also don't watch like MSNBC or yeah. CNN. I don't believe in any of those news formats. Yeah, I'm he gets line. his news from SNY, the Mets uh, <laughs> broadcast. Yeah. So, but it's, yeah, no, I mean, I just, obviously I don't agree with it. It's, it's, I feel like it's coming up in New York at a very specific age. It's just, uh, it's obviously the opposite of what I've grown up. Right. To believe to go but with. see for me, again, me being, you know, I guess, cause I'm a little bit older, 39. When I hear you say that, even though I like, you know, listen to Greg stuff more, I don't, I, the, the, the difference between me and somebody 15 years younger is I'm like, Great. I love having Vito around. I love agree to disagree. We have, we're talking about different things. It's all good. But somebody younger would be like, well, now I'm going to fire that person. Yeah, I can't even be in the same room with that person, which is insane. Yeah. It's, it's, that's the scary thing because yeah. it used to be, uh, you know, I had, I, and it ha I guess 2015 changed a lot of people's like it just became a very personal kind of thing, but the left had always been the politics is personal. It is personal. It's like, I can't be around you, right. you know, but generally most people are apolitical. If you ask them what's going on, they're like, they're in, they're fucking following football right now. And people won't get into the election probably for another eight months. Sure. You know? Well, that's why even somebody, you know, I, I I would even consider myself apolitical because I only know the little tidbits of the headlines. Like, I don't even know who the Secretary of State is. I have no idea what's going on. He can play guitar. He was the guy that was playing Anthony Blinken. Oh, play I've heard of him. Yeah, he was playing guitar last week. He was pretty good. Yeah, see, but that's the thing. Like, your job is to be in politics or know about it because you show, I'm an expert in comedy. You want to mm -hmm. talk about stand-up comedy? You want to talk about my opinions on comedy? That's my job Day in, day out. Like, you yeah. know, you mentioned emotional truth to Salman Minaj. Like, I have opinions about that, and I could talk about that freely and be considered an expert. But Was that a good excuse? 
Oh, to get into Samanaj? Yeah, was that a good... No, what he said. Oh, emotional truths? I thought... Okay, so me as, as kind of a, a brother in arms with him, mm -hmm. if you will, with comedy, and, you know, it's also for me tough because I'm a person... You know, we're personal friends. I saw what... I saw what happened, I believe, mm -hmm. is that we all, every single one of us as a stand-up comic, all of us, the truth at times is funny, but more times than not, the actual truth, the way it happened, is not funny. That's re that's a TED talk. That's reporting the facts. Yeah. That's that's not what we're doing. Comedy, you have to what he said, a seed of truth, and then kind of almost create like a web of lies is true. It, yeah. That that is how we make. But you make it when you do that, or anybody does it. It's the the, the point is to be funny. His was more of a social construct of like, right. uh, if this is about race and identity. So I think what happened was that that's what it was, because uh, he was a stand-up comic. I met him as a stand-up 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. Hassan is, is, is a comic. What happened, though, throughout the course of his career, and, and we are taking that as comics, this is what we're doing. We're having the emotional truths where we're fibbing to make a good point. What happened was somewhere along the lines of his career, he at times, I guess, after the White House Correspondence Center started to do a, take on a bit of a more serious side and go into the more politics side, but still kept the comic brain. And then that's where the wires yeah. got crossed. So, so I saw what happened is what I'm saying. So to revive his career, should he blow Joe DeRosa? That <laughs> is the only way. <laughs> exactly. Or if he'd like to allow me to blow him, we could do it at <laughs> patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, $5 a month, folks. So I, I think, though, I think that... Um, that, yeah, w w with a situation like that, you know, it, it's again, I'm biased because he's a personal friend and I know him. If I didn't know him at all, I might have different opinions. But when you know a person, that's why people who like, you know, know Donald Trump or know even Hillary Clinton, they may not even agree with them politically, but they like like they yeah. can't see it the way a, a complete stranger can see it. Uh, Vito, the liberal, so has something to say. I'm, I like Chris, I'm a big old snowflake libcock. But when yes. I first started working in radio. A.K.A. Joe DeRosa. <laughs> when I first started working in radio, I worked for Breitbart uh, Radio. Oh, really? In 2016. The lead Greg's getting hard. <laughs> and I produced Steve Bannon's show when he was on Sirius. Oh, my God. For about three, four months. You were in the, you were in the jungle. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know who Steve Bannon was before I started doing this, too. So he, a, he thinks I'm a commie. He's a <laughs> yeah. But in that time, I, I spoke on the phone with every single Republican primary candidate. And uh, the only one that actually got on the phone and was very pleasant was Donald Trump. Right. And as against Donald Trump as I was in those four years and, and even in the in election, all I've ever said to people was, I will tell you, on the phone, pleasure, very polite of all the candidates on both sides that I spoke to, because I also worked on the Dem side on mm -hmm. serious on both sides. He was the only one who made his own phone call, just randomly called into the show. And actually said to Steve Bannon said, hold on, make him wait. I have listeners to get to. <laughs> and Donald said, you tell Steve he's the boss. I'll do whatever he wants. Wow. You know what your story is repeated by so many people that they meet him and they go like, uh, you know, because he, he, he has that persuasive ability. He'll remember. He called me on my birthday just like two weeks ago, September 12th. And wow. I had, and it, yeah, thank nice. you. He goes, it's your favorite president. Hey, Greg, it's your favorite president. And my, I'm with my sister and three other people. I put him on speakerphone. He ends up talking to my sister for like 15 minutes. And this was just a couple of weeks ago this year. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and uh, he remembers everybody's names. It's bizarre. And it's because he's a salesman. And there's something about a salesman's lie that is, you know, be, because you can see it coming. Right. It's not as bad as like a lawyer's lie. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like a lawyer will lie to you and destroy your life. But a, a Trump lie is the crowd was the crowd was 10,000 people. And it was actually yeah. maybe a thousand. Right. You know, but it's like you can understand that kind of lie. I get it. Yeah. I, I get it. And like you said, a salesman, you know, with our country, which I love, I, I and, you know, I will publicly sometimes, you know, I go on stage, say at the comedy cellar or, you know, anywhere that's like not my fans. And I'll be like, I'll have a bit where I'm like, I love America. And sometimes people boo that, yeah. that are Americans. I'm like, what the fuck is going on that? Like, I'm in the rarity of people in comedy who like proudly say they love America. It's like, just because I love America, it's like, so what box am I in? I love America, but yet I have a diverse family and I'm kind of gay. So it's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm all over the place, you know? So like, you can't pin me down. And I think that's, what, you know, I know Trump runs in the Republican Party, but I think with Trump, you can't pin him down either because he's saying all these things that it's like you want to attack him on this. But then he kind of contradicted himself and said that and that's controversial. And then you're like, ah, fuck it. Just let him win. Yeah, you he's, know, he's uh, he was he was 
pro-gay marriage before Obama was. Yeah, before you know? Biden was. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he lived in New York and he li- he, he was yeah. oh, I mean, you cannot be you cannot be anti-gay in New York City. No. That, that's no. impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> you, know? you know, and I think now, you know, as, you know, the American public and, you know, even somebody of my very, very, very liberal friend, even um, Vito, I'm sure, uh, well, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> just saying like Biden, people know Biden's not the answer either just because he's simply too old and we're yeah. all like, well, now we there should be an age limit mm-hmm. or a competence limit. Like we're all saying that. But for me, and I don't know if it's just being kind of pounded down the throat with conspiracy theories, you know, um, for a long time is like we think everything's a conspiracy now where it's like, are they... The Dems, the, the Biden's doing this on purpose, and he's actually dead, and it's AI. And but then it's like it could not be; it could just be he's an older guy, and he's too old, and he's just having dementia, and that's yeah. what it is. And, and but he is a pushover for whoever is making the decisions because he really likes being president. He likes all the he likes the formalities. He likes the sunglasses and the jacket. He he's not actually pushing for any kind of principle. No, that's somebody else. And that's the thing that is a little scary to me is that at least you know what Trump is. You don't know what Joe is. And right. Joe doesn't seem to care. I like RFK. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, RFK. Did you see his? Let's go to RFK's. Uh, we, th- we were, I guess this is why he did it. He did this Instagram video thanking for all who donated, did a backflip into the, a lake. When, oh, we don't God. understand why. But. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible if it was like a tragic? <laughs> you don't want to mix Kennedys in water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Greg, 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 like the Legion of Skanks. If you have a good joke, they'll go, they'll chant your name. Um, yeah, no, dude, Kennedy, uh, that was, I was thinking too, like if he jumped into this and I mean, if he turned out to be a paraplegic after this, I'd donate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going to, I think he's going to pull more from the Trump side than the Biden side well, because do, of the vax stuff. Well, right? do you feel, I want, do you feel with all these people running, like because people are taking from uh, everybody, it will eventually then just be Biden versus Trump again? Trump wins Republican, Biden wins. I think so. Yeah, right. I don't know how else it could happen. I mean, even with with, with all the legal shit that's that Trump's going through, it's like it, that doesn't stop this. You know what's crazy? I have a family member who is, you know, was in the center, but then heavy left despises Donald Trump. You know, like that person, like that. You know that meme of that woman like crying, like, yes. ah! yeah. like that's one of my aunts. And and the, by the way, the person crying kind of looked like you. Yeah, you're right. Yes. We pull that up. Is this Greg Gustav? We have to pull that. You know what I'm saying? Google, Google me. I know what you want. The woman crying, she Donald look, Trump. She's on looking the around after she does yeah, it. Yeah, it kind of looks like Gutfeld. Um, But she said now, she was like, you know, we were at a dinner party a couple of weeks ago. She was like, all this like witch hunt stuff with Trump is making me very suspicious of the left. She's like, and I'm not saying I'm not going to vote there for whoever is. the left is. But she was like, yeah, right there In with the, the green. green. Yeah. She was like, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not gonna vote. That's yeah, that's 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 Greg outside his house when another homeless person is <laughs> yes, on trank exactly. calling the police. Um, <laughs> so so you don't see DeRosa in the picture. <laughs> yeah. It's right below. <laughs> DeRosa's on his knees. That's yes, why you're yelling yes. like that. Uh, so so but she was saying, like, you know, it's making me so suspicious that like I don't know like why they're going after this guy and and i get it she was like but it all just seems very obvious it's to stop the presidency and she's like it just doesn't feel fair it doesn't feel real to me yeah there's a thing it feels like if this were a chess board they're taking the chess rather than playing the game they're removing the chess pieces so if you look at like rfk the dems like knocked him out of the party so he can't run they're trying to get trump off the board then you look at like the government is now suing elon musk Right. You look at Russell Brand, like, you know, you you can question the timing of that is question it, to me is questionable, even though the crimes sound terrible. But it's just like, why now? Uh, there's there's like a, different people are of a certain the, the persuasion is questioning those in power are all getting picked off. Right. That's what I find. It's, it's a trend. I mean, like why they're suing Elon Musk over some weird a uh, racial discrimination case he has nothing to do with they said like at, at i guess it's the car company or the or the uh, the the missile company i'm not sure that they were dis- yeah. there was a like a ra- there was a race issue there and like he doesn't know about yeah. that shit yeah it's 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 it seems like there's witch hunts um left and right which brings me to something too where you know i think i saw some stuff like aimed at you with this whole rider strike you kept your show going yes you just kept it going and why did you do that? 
I don't have. I don't, I'm not in the union. There's no union. Oh, okay. So it wasn't even a union thing. For yeah, you. no, there was no. Yeah, like Fox is not is not a union shop. So you never. Nobody was ever even asking you to stop. No, no. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah because then that. Because I thought it was like. You know, I saw it was like somebody. So then somebody was just another misinformed idiot on social media. Was like, I can't believe God yeah, yeah, doing I this saw show. That. It was like, it's like, dude, it's like, what am I gonna do? Just like not show up for work and get fired? It's yeah, yeah, insane. you got to do it. I mean, dude, the show. I mean, do you? Because it's always been my dream as. A, oh, he dropped his dildo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've always, uh, I've always dreamt of. You know, we do the podcast here. You know, I go on the road and love doing stand up. But now having a family, I would love to have. Like, you know, obviously the goal for a lot of comics is like, oh, you want to host your own late night or get on SNL and all that. But I kind of look at what you have where I'm like, you know, you live in New York, you're doing a show that you love every night. You got fans, you're crushing in the ratings. Do you feel like you're like living your dream that you set out to do? I guess so. I didn't. You know, it was just because I, I wasn't crazy about doing it in the first uh, first place. because I didn't want a target on my back. I would, be, I would I was doing the five which was just a great gig. You know, you're one of five people and and it was like fun and wasn't it was political but not political and I knew that the moment that I got that nightly show, I would like it would just I would be Tucker Jr. Right. You know, they'd come out. Now Tucker's gone, so now it's me. Yeah. And it, and uh, but it's it is pretty amazing. It's great. I get to do two shows a day, and uh, I go home and uh, and uh, get I, it's not as hard as it seems, and it, it and, and it has a built-in audience. Yes, it has the built-in audience, and uh, every time I do your show, I'm like, you know, not exact, you know, like what you do, you do your own thing, but I'm like, man, this is like the dream, because as much as podcasting, as much as I love it, it's it's beautiful, it's a thing, there is something about the cachet of, I got a set, I have a team of writers, I kind of, I prepare myself, I got the audience, but I kind of get in there for an hour and a half, I kill it, and then my job is done, where with podcasting, kind of feels like all day, every day, we're doing this show. Yeah. They're editing all day. We're trying to come up with things to talk about. I'm thinking this is a topic. That's a, it feels like almost unsustainable. Well, to keep I think doing you're in a transition. It's a transition period, right? It, I think we're still trying to figure out what's going to happen as ne like it could be terrestrial. Well, I don't know what you call it, network TV. That shit could be done. Sure. You know, yeah. and then this and you guys already have a head start. You're watching. You're watching you. You're watching Tim Dillon. You're watching Rogan and, uh, yeah, and Schultz, uh, Andrew Schultz. Yeah. Big guy. I, I think I think that. I think that yeah, what we do with the podcasting is we the, the thing about it and what I what I have went back to it is I only now talk to people or do the shows that I want to do. I think less about the business and the money because when we first started, there was absolutely no money in business attached. We were doing it because we were like comics. Yeah. We were not allowed to get on the the networks because of tweets or because of the controversial comedy we were doing. So we said, you know what, we'll do it ourselves. Yes. And then the people started to come, and then. And then the business started to come, and then all of a sudden, you you can't say exactly what you want because you got to stay in the box for HelloFresh or something. Yeah. And 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 so you got away from it. But now I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, man. I started this to say whatever I want and just be me, be unapologetically me. And now I do that again. And 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 I feel like you know to grow this into like something like you have would be a, a dream. And you're an inspiration. Oh well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Go up. <laughs> Yeah. There it is. Shows shows Joe DeRosa on his flight home from Vegas. <laughs> After he hears this. All right, let's go. We gotta let you go. We wanna do fuck Mary Kill. Me, Joe DeRosa. Or fuck Mary Kill. Me, me, Joe DeRosa, or who's another? Tom Shalou. Tom Shalou. <laughs> Tom Shalou is a serial killer, let's be Tom honest. Tom Shalou is a serial killer, but I like Tom Shalou. If yeah. Tom Shalou killed me, I would happily die. He would do it with a, just a smile on his face. Yes. That smile. He's such a character actor. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he looks like kind of a stretched out Kevin Spacey. You know, like, a, like yes. he's been on Spacey on a rack. Like he's like he's a uh, Spacey on Ozempic. Yes. 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 This Have you noticed uh, the Ozempic people that it's starting to be, look really weird? Yes. And uh, Dr. Drew, I don't know if you, yeah. fr Dr. Drew, you know, big podcast guy, whatever. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's, he, he, he came on here on the podcast and he talked about Ozempic and how if patients really want it, he will give it to them. But how the, the side effects are is starting to happen, like any shortcut around nature is not going to work yeah. and now it's starting to happen and, and if they get off it it all comes back yes so it's like basically it's like cocaine it's like legal cocaine like the supermodels would just do cocaine through their careers now they just do ozempic yes and it's like testosterone for guys like yeah. a lot of guys use the testosterone it's fine you could do it but it's like you, then your hair falls out mm -hmm. you, you got no you know you're it's like testes a, shrink testes shrink it's all that 
But um, with that being said, I'm, I am on testosterone and Ozempic, and I'm feeling great. <laughs> yeah. um, You've sh- never looked better. Shitting out of my dick. <laughs> um, all right, Greg, any, uh, anything you need to promote? You got a book? You got nah, anything? Or is it just your show every yeah, night? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just glad I did this, and I apologize for uh, flaking. No, you weren't flaking, dude. You were you were literally in the throes of alcoholism. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's coming back, baby. Uh, no, good for you, man. Congre- happy uh, happy sobriety. That that's good. Whatever whatever uh, makes you happy. I'll tell you, there was there was not um, no nobody was sober at uh, Skankfest. Yeah. It was a good time. Um, thanks for all the people who wound up coming out to the Las Vegas show. I I got fucking my ticket sales got crushed by the MSG sphere. <laughs> Did you see the MSG that's sphere? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, and Bono was a U two was there. <laughs> It was insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what the point is, but it's, <laughs> I know I, it's Vegas. I talked to somebody who went to the show and they were like, it was amazing. Don't get me wrong. It was amazing. But they were just showing video the whole time. Like you're inside, you're outside, you're in space. You almost kind of felt like U2. It was a U2 soundtrack. Right. Like you forgot. No, that's actually Bono. That's because you're ama- enamored by everything else. Yeah. But, um, all right, baby. Vito, got anything to say? You Are you going to kill Greg? <laughs> what do you want to do? No, we're buddies now. Oh yeah! yeah. See, we we there brought the world one, together, one person at a time. That's it. We got we gained one more gut slut <laughs> in veto. All right, Greg. Thank you so much for coming on, buddy. My pleasure.